Welcome to Farm Charm Chic. I'm Emily. Today's episode is a mega video that is jam-packed with ideas for different risers, trays, and tiered trays. They are all unique and I know you're going to love these. If you like crafting, dupes, DIYs, hacks, thrift flips, or just creating in general, I would love if you would consider subscribing. And if you do like any of today's projects, remember to hit that thumbs up. But let's get right into the DIYs. This is a sign blank that you can get at Hobby Lobby. I buy them when they're on sale and you can see here the price there. And I did buy it at 50% off. So make sure that when you're buying these pieces, you buy them when they're on sale. And I'm just going to cut off the little hanging tab there. And I also go in with my heat gun and remove the price tag. And then these little staples here that was keeping our little twine stapled to it. I just take some needle nose pliers and I remove those. A couple of them gave me a little bit of trouble. So I just use my little weeding tool to help get underneath those. But I just take those off and then sand it down so it gives it a very finished look. Now I'm going to make a tray out of this sign and I'm going to use these little feet here. I get these at Hobby Lobby in their wood section. I believe these do go on sale too. It's five dollars for the bag so if you can get these on sale do but you've got enough you can do a couple projects out of one bag. So I'm just going to paint them with some white chalk paint to match the original color of the sign but you could also stain these and do like a two-tone look or really you could paint the base of your sign and the feet whatever color you wanted to match your decor. I just love taking pieces like this and making them your own. I mean, to buy a riser like this, you're going to pay a lot more than you would making it in this instance if you buy all of these pieces on sale. Plus, you get the satisfaction of knowing that you created something. So I'm just taking my emery board and I'm going to rough up these feet so that way it matches that really distressed weathered look that the sign has there. So I just wanted it to look like it was a completely cohesive piece. So you can measure where you want to put these feet and mark them, or you can just kind of eyeball it like I did. I'm a big fan of that. So whatever works for your style. And I do use a combination of wood glue and with hot glue. So I just put a little bit of wood glue in the middle of each of these feet and they're already cut off. So they have a flat surface that's going to glue to your surface there. And then I just put hot glue on the outside. And again, just do this with all four legs. And it is that simple to make this tray. I just love this. This is such a stunning piece that is going to take you through every single season. How beautiful is this with just some everyday farmhouse decor on here? But of course, we want to see what it looks like with the Christmas items that we just made. This was the perfect craft my stash item for me and I have a bunch of Hobby Lobby clearance items that I just keep a big bin of. You guys know I'm a big fan of checking out that sale section at Hobby Lobby and I had this sign that came from there that was like, I can't remember what the price tag just said on there, $1.50 or something. And then I have this candlestick, which is concrete. It was very heavy and I knew when I bought it that I wanted to do some type of riser with it. So I'm just showing you guys, look, I'm actually measuring something. <laughs> I don't measure anything. So I really had to point out that I actually tried with this one. Uh, I just found the center and then traced around that. Now I have this big long piece of trim. This just came from my hardware store. You can just buy it down where the, um, like your baseboards, they'll have like trim on that aisle too. And I've made several projects out of using this. So I just cut it at a 45 degree angle. I measured the size that I needed. And I did just use my hand saw. I didn't use like a table saw or anything to do this. I just use my miter box, like little miter box table saw hand saw, excuse me, uh, to do that, which I'll have linked down in my description box because I love using that. So, and it's, it's very simple. And then um, I just measured these to be a little bit less than what the sign was because I wanted them to be a little bit of trim here because that is going to be the flat part of my riser. And then I just used some super glue to glue these down. Hot glue would probably work, but I just felt like super glue was going to give me a closer fit uh, and it was going to work a little bit better over time. So that was why I chose to do that. Um, now the sign has a little bit of raised text and this is the type of super glue that I work with all the time. So I'm just showing either of these. Now the sign had a little bit of a raised area. I should have sanded that off, but I didn't realize at the time it was going to be an issue. So I'm just pointing that out now. Now I'm just using some E6000 and some hot glue in the areas where the E6000 is not. So that can kind of give me the quick hold and then the E6000 can dry and give me the permanent hold. Now, of course, as I'm gluing this on right now, I'm realizing that I forgot to take the price tags off of the back. <laughs> so I do go in and take that off so you can't see it, but uh, remove that beforehand. But for some reason, it just didn't dawn on me until after I glued it down and I went, whoops. 
So I spray painted this outside because it's finally warm enough to spray paint at my house. And I'm just showing that on these edges here, we're gonna put some antiquing wax to get in all of the little grooves of those pieces. Now, those trim pieces are completely optional. If you don't wanna mess around with having to go get something extra or you don't wanna cut anything, I get it. Uh, totally optional, just a different um, thing of decoration. I just kind of love embellishing things in different ways. So you can see that I put a pretty heavy coat of antiquing wax on this trim here uh, and then wiped it off so it just kind of helped pop all of those little nooks and crannies there. It kind of helps to see the detail. And then I do brighten up the top of it with a little bit of chalk paint dry brushing over it. And then here I'm just distressing the edges with some antiquing wax around the whole thing to kind of give it um, that aged look. So it, so not just the trim was um, aged with the antiquing wax. So I just go around all of the edges. I also go around on the candlestick portion. I don't think I show that on here, but I did do that. So look at how absolutely darling this looks. I think this is beautiful. I really think that trim sets this off. Now I really wanted to do something extra here. So um, to put on the top of it, I've seen like rustic metal pieces on the top of risers. So I bought this at the wedding section at Hobby Lobby, which is the best kept secret Hobby Lobby has for crafters is the wedding section. Always check there. This was like, I can't even remember how much it said, $1.50 I think it said on this little tin bucket here. And I'm using just some regular like white vinegar, just the kind you buy in the big jug. I use it like in my dishwasher to help my dishes um, and some paper towels. I'm trying to age this. I've never done this process before. So this was totally new to me. So I soaked all of these uh, paper towels very liberally in the vinegar and I am just putting them all around um, the metal on here. And um, I, I read this on Pinterest to do this. I've also seen some other uh, crafters do um, this on a smaller scale with like safety pins and bells and things. Um, and so I'm just like, you can see here, I'm just gonna set that down. And I, the, I did this, it was probably about noon that I put this on here and I came and checked this. This is probably about five in the afternoon uh, or the evening. And you can see how much rust is showing on here now and how it's dulled down that shininess on here. And I decided at this point that I want a little more rust. I mean, you could easily leave it like this, but I mean, this is like five to six hours or something. So I put it all back on and then I leave it overnight. So if you really want it to be really rusty, do this and leave it for 24 hours uh, and see what happens here. Um, so this is the next day I'm taking this out and you can see the paper towels are showing like tons of rust there and you can see how aged that gets. Now I think because I placed the paper towels so close to it that maybe if I'd let a little oxygen get in there, the reaction might've happened a little bit more on the things. But I mean, I'm extremely happy for my first time with how this came out and it was such a fun process to do. It does smell like vinegar, so keep it in your garage if it's gonna bother you. Mine was just in my basement and really I couldn't smell it uh, unless I was right next to it. So I'm cleaning off the bottom because my intention was to glue it to the top of this riser. And this is what I would have used to do that and some hot glue for the temporary hold and then either super glue or E6000 for that permanent hold but I decided not to do that. So I'm just showing you that that's how you would glue it on. But I thought the versatility would be much greater to leave it not glued to it. So here it is just on its own. It's darling, it definitely has that farmhouse look. I mean, I'm thinking next, I'm like, I wanna get a big Rubbermaid bin to do this in with some watering cans or something. But here it is on top of the riser. I think it looks darling on there. What do you guys think of this process? Is that something that you would try? This project, I was so nervous about how it would come out. So I did just buy one of these wood rounds at Home Depot. It was $11 and um, I want to give it, I saw one of these in, um, I can't even remember. It was some boutique store that I was in and it look, looked like a wood round with wood and marble. And I thought, oh, I can probably recreate that. So I just stained the whole thing with the antiquing wax and then I'm going to try foam marble. And I have never done this. You'll have to see if it turns out or not. But I have never painted foam marble. So I came up with the spacing that I wanted. So I used my tape and I wanted my marble to be the length um, or the width of three strips of painter's tape. And then the wood I wanted to have be two strips. And then the sides of the wood are a little bit longer. But if that makes sense you can kind of see what i'm doing here i just match those edges up really good i make sure that they're pressed down uh, where the paint is going to touch so that way it doesn't bleed through and um i left the back side of this blank because i wanted to 
if it totally looked horrible, I could at least salvage it and have the back side of it be plain wood so I could use, you know how they have these big cutting boards and different things uh, that use this like as a tray um, on your countertop or, you know, or something. That's kind of what I, the look I was going for, what I wanted. So I do just go and I pounce that paint onto the edge of the painter's tape to form a seal there. And then I take the marble right up to the edge because I want it to look like it goes all the way through. And then my thought was, well, if this turns out, I can always go back and add it to the back side. But I, uh, I just did it on the top for right now, like I said, because then I could turn it over if everything went wrong and just use it as a stained piece of wood. And I could always sand it down also if it doesn't turn out. So, but I go on each section where my marble is going to be and I just pounce along that edge and then it takes about two or three coats to get it really thick. So here we go. I'm using some elephant chalk paint and I'm using just a little brush and you just kind of spin, I'm spinning and I'm pulling down, okay, to kind of give it the veining look there. You can kind of see in the upper right hand corner, I had got a couple of samples of marble from Home Depot, like in their countertop section to kind of use as inspiration. So I spray it and I have water and isopropyl alcohol that I'm using here. So I spray it and I go over it with my brush to kind of soften it. And I'm like, this looks horrible. <laughs> like this is gonna be the biggest fail I've ever done. So I wipe that off and well, I try to blot it because I think, oh, and I'm like, nope. So I wipe it off. So I'm gonna try down lower. So I spray it with some, this is the isopropyl alcohol with the black spray pump there that I spray on it and try the same thing down here to see if that works any better instead of water. And I spray some more on it and I keep dabbing, trying to soften that. And then I'd go in with my baby wipe and kind of, you know, dab it. And I'm like, it looks a little bit better kind of. And then I go in and darken the veining there and then I just totally go blot that with my baby wipe there. So I'm taking you guys through the whole process so you can kind of see exactly what works, what doesn't. So, and then you just kind of pick where you want your veining to be. Um, and I realize while doing this one right here, I realize it works better when it's a wet surface. And so, because I've sprayed so much of the alcohol on there. And so you just kind of spin your brush in your hand as you drag it to create those lines. And then um, I did not love going in with my big brush to kind of dab it, even though, now I did not look up any tutorials or anything. I have just seen a couple of things here and there, like in reels of people on Instagram of people doing this. And so I just kind of went off of what I had seen there and thought I can figure this out. So just wait and see the end to see if I really did figure it out. But, um, Yep, you can see me just going through here with the veins and I, I am softening it on this one. But like I said, I don't know that using the brush to soften it was my most favorite method. So I don't know that I would do that. So, but I did find that working with a wet surface works better. So I feel like it's starting to look a little bit better, but I sprayed water and alcohol all over this section. You can see me doing there. And then I go in and this is where I can, you can start to see the veining almost like bleed, if you will. So you watch this here. See that bleeding that happens right there? I feel like that's what gives it the most natural look. And so I, I, this is where I start to think, okay, this could actually work. And so I just keep using it and I go back and forth between my isopropyl alcohol and my water. And I don't know is that there was a difference between the two, but I had started out using them both and it seemed to be working. So I just kept going back and forth. I know with nail art, like doing fingernail art, like the alcohol, it helps give you like that watercolor effect and stuff. And, and you use it a lot when you do um, nail art. And so that's why I thought to use it on this. So that's the alcohol that I just sprayed there. And then I go through and I tried to keep the same um, way that my veining was going. So it looked like it was one piece of marble that was cut to fit in between the wood pieces. 
if that makes sense. So you can see these are all kind of going downwards and to the right. Okay, here we go. Moment of truth. So I'm peeling it off and I'm like, okay, this is actually looking okay. So satisfying when you peel back paint and there's not any bleed through. So, so far, so good. I'm loving, what are you guys thinking of this? Or do you, do you think this is nuts that I tried this? So look, I love it. And I do go back in and where my paint had pulled a little bit of the stain up, I just rub a little bit more stain on there just to kind of fill in those areas. But that was really it. And so you can kind of see, those are my inspiration pieces. So here we go. What do you guys think of this? So I'm thinking of just using this either, either as a tray on my counter or like in my china hutch with dishes in front of it. But for my first attempt at marble, what do you guys think? Have you guys ever painted faux marble before? I am so excited to show you this project. I absolutely love the final result. Now, a few weeks back, I showed you the My Dollar Tree haul and I got this cute little picket fence sign from Dollar Tree. So, and I had so many of you be like, oh, I've had those, I've seen those, or I'm excited to see what you do. So I hope that this is something that you maybe haven't seen before and it turns out super cute. So hopefully you can give this a try. Now on this particular sign, these things come off so easy. Both signs that I have tried to remove things from, they pop right off, they don't ruin the sign so hopefully that's how everybody finds their sign so I just get everything removed from the sign and then I just cover it in white chalk paint you could do whatever color that you would like and then I'm going to go put uh, with a sharpie marker just put the slats back on this uh, fence by just using a ruler and drawing some straight lines there and then I'm gonna go over them with some white paint to dull them down a little bit because I don't want the huge contrast of the black with the um, I want it to look aged and kind of more natural if that makes sense hopefully it does I know I say if that makes sense a lot but I guess in my mind I just want to make sure that I'm saying it so you can understand it so I apologize for that anyway now I'm just taking some antiquing wax on a chip brush and I wiped a little bit of it off on my baby wipe there and then I'm just slowly going back and forth here on each of the slats to kind of give it a wood feel and um, and then I'll kind of go back and you want to make sure not to go over an area that you've already done because that will smear the wax and it won't give you the really uh, streak, good streak lines there. Now these boxes I'm sure you've seen at Dollar Tree I'm removing the centers out of them and we're just going to use the bases of these little drawers. So I'm just using some wood glue and some hot glue to get these glued together. And I had somebody ask me if that wouldn't compromise the wood glue by using hot glue. And it does not at all. It's actually pretty common practice uh, if you don't have like clamps that size or something or in a pinch to use hot glue to clamp them close that instant hold uh, to keep the wood glue there and in place. Now I do have clamps, so I am just going to clamp this together and I wasn't intending on doing this, but I really don't want there to be a space between those little boxes. I want them to look as cohesive as possible. Now I'm taking some craft sticks. You could do painter sticks. You could do the pops, craft popsicle sticks, whatever. These are just some sticks that I got on Amazon. I'll see if I can link them below for you. And they don't have like the curved edge, like the painter stick. That's why I like them. And I thought it would really elevate this to have a look like a little planter box if I put this edge on it. So I just cut it to size just by eyeballing you know kind of where I measured it cutting it with my scissors and then I'm just using the wood glue and the hot glue you do want to make sure you can see there that I don't put the hot glue over the wood glue you don't want those two to mix you want the hot the wood glue to actually only be touching the wood and then I just cover this in white paint uh, I went back and forth if I wanted to do like a just stain it brown which would be really cute too but I am really happy with how it looks all together at the end I like the really light uh, color to it. So then this is just one of these cute little signs that they do at Dollar Tree all year long. This is one of like the hollow ones if if you can see what I'm talking about here um, that's not like the solid wood and that's what we want. And so I just removed that little hanger because I want this to be like a little tray shelf on here. So I'm just going to measure this. You can see it's way too big for how it is so I need to cut it down. So I'm just kind of measuring it there and seeing exactly how I want it and you can kind of see if you could the cameras are really hard to pick up that I drew a little line right there where I'm going to cut this. Now I pull out my miter box 
box and I cut this down with my miter box. So you can do that however you would like. You could also build like with just using some paint sticks, your own um, little tray to go there. I just thought it would be, I was gonna try to use the sign in and it actually works out really well. Now I need this to be closed on the end. So the piece that I cut off, I am just going to tear that little end piece off. It snaps right off and just using some super glue of some sort, I'm just going to glue that back onto the end so it makes a shorter sign. Now by all means, if you can find a shorter sign at Dollar Tree that works, it's already this size, definitely use that. So this paper just peels off of here. And then if you spray it with some water and let it sit for a couple of minutes, you can scrape all of that glue and all of the residue and the excess paper off. So I just get that all clear. Um, you don't really wanna paint over it because it will start to peel up the paper. It'll, it'll absorb the paint and it won't look very nice. So I do recommend taking all of that paper off. Now I paint that other tray white and then I go back in and distress everything because you guys know that I love to distress things. So completely optional here, how you decide to do this. I didn't sand any of it. I only used uh, just antiquing wax on my chip brush. And I just went over all of the edges and I thought that little lip going around the edge there gave it a really good dimension. It added a lot with the, uh, to add a little more distressing to it. And I'm going to glue this onto our little fence here using just some super glue. So I don't use any hot glue because I didn't want it to push out at all. I wanted it to be as flush as it could. And sometimes with hot glue, it will dry a little bit before you push it and it will not let it sit flush to the thing. So that's why I did that. And I didn't have any clamps that would really clamp that really good. So now I'm just distressing this other little tray here, just the same way, just antiquing wax on a little chip brush and going around getting the coverage that I want. And then on the back side of it, I also use some super glue and then place that and I could kind of get the corners but there was a little bowing in the middle so I just held it with my fingers for about 60 seconds for it to dry you guys look at how cute this little fence like potting bench I don't even know what you want to call it but I think it's so cute so now I'm just going to uh, accessorize it and you guys this is something that you can use all year long and accessorize with all sorts of different seasons uh, I'm just putting a little beaded garland kind of fits right over those little pegs on that the pickets on that little fence there and the little tray lets you just stick some things in kind of think of like an alternative you guys know I love to do like different types of tiered trays and I feel like this really kind of fits that bill and you can just see that things just sit right in there so here's a little bonus DIY. Uh, I wanted something else on my shelf there, but I couldn't find anything in my stash that really worked. So I'm just taking, this is a wooden nameplate card for like a table setting. And on one side, it's a chalkboard. It's just the plain wood on the other side. And it came from Hobby Lobby in a pack of like 10. It was like two or $3. So keep an eye open for those because I love this shape. And this is just a Dollar Tree rub-on transfer that I am using. I thought this was so cute. If you guys follow me on Instagram and you see this transfer at your Dollar Tree, message me and let me know I would love to find some more of them. Now as I'm peeling this back if there's an area that the design is not fully transferred I just lay it back down and then I just go over it with my little craft stick there to make sure that it's fully transferred. Where the antiquing wax does make it take a little bit of extra time because that wax it doesn't want to stick to the best. You guys this is one of those items that I kind of visualized it I had the little idea and as I was putting it together I'm like this could be a total fail but oh my gosh like I am so excited with the outcome of this I think it's absolutely beautiful. It's going to be so fun to decorate for all different seasons. It's a piece that can stay out all year long in my home and it was constructed with all Dollar Tree items. Like that just blows me away. Is this something that you guys would make? If you did, would you leave it up year round? I would love to know your thoughts on this piece. If you have a stash or pick up these little pallets from Dollar Tree's crafting area and wonder what to do with them, I have the best DIY for you here. This is by far my favorite Dollar Tree DIY ever. So I am using nine of these and I'm going to make a tray with them. So I'm just using a combination of wood glue and super glue, just the super glue and wood glue I got from Dollar Tree. And I'm just kind of alternating. The super glue gives it more of a, a, a like quick hold, if that makes sense here, while it lets the wood glue dry. So that's why I decided to use that. I don't love using hot hot glue in instances like this where I need the pieces to fit together tight because I feel like sometimes the hot glue will dry in between and they'll kind of be like a space or something. So I'm just using these and I glue three together end to end and then I do that for each of my three rows. So that will take care of all nine of my little pallets here. And so as you can see, I have all three rows done here. And then I'm just using, I have to kind of space my wood glue out there and kind of fill in the gaps with the super glue. And I will glue these three rows together using the same method here. To get these to fit together very securely, I am using some clamps. You can sit and hold them for that super glue to dry, but I found that the clamps worked the best. 
These four wooden signs are from Dollar Tree also, and I'm using them for the edges of our tray. And I'm just showing you here that this bottom is very secure. It is not going to fall apart. So now I just need to measure the edges so I know exactly where to mark on all of my signs to cut. Now you can use a hand saw or a miter saw, whatever you use to cut. And then I did drill a couple of holes in these. And as you can see, I ended up having to use a little bit of spackling because it's like a compressed wood. It's not like solid wood, if that makes sense. And so it kind of tore a little bit when my drill went through. So just a little spackling over that. Now I just use my super glue and my wood glue to glue those sides down first. And then I am going to glue these other edges, the front and back in. And if you saw me there, I made sure to put super glues on the edge of the those pieces as well as the bottom part so that way all of my surfaces that are touching are well glued together. Now at first I was just going to do one base coat of chalk paint because all of those signs are different colors and I was kind of using this as a primer coat and then I was going to spray paint it. I ended up just doing the whole thing with chalk paint in my studio and I really do like how it turned out but just know that you have to go in between each of these palettes with a little detail brush to make sure that those are all painted in between so it takes a little bit of love and effort and time here. Uh, spray paint may do a little bit quicker of a job for you but I'm just letting you know how it was but I'm so pleased with how this came out I'm so happy that I did take the time to do this so just that little detail brush in between each of those now I do decide to distress mine because you guys know I love that that is totally my style and when I've seen these in the store they have had kind of that distressed finish so I'm just using some antiquing wax on a chip brush I will dip my antiquing wax in and then I will wipe it off a little bit on a paper towel and then just lightly brush over the areas there so I did the inside of my tray first and then I go through on all of the edges and make sure that they're well covered as well. You just want to make sure that if you're doing a distressing finish like this, you want to make sure all of the areas are covered. So the inside of the tray, the outsides of the tray, outside sides, if that makes sense here. And then I kind of go along the edges like I'm doing right here. I feel that that gives a little bit of definition to the edges as well and really helps it to look really good. And it just, I just love how it turns out. Now I'm using a little bit of the rope from Dollar Tree and I am just going to put a little painter's tape on the edge so I can feed it through where I drilled my whole if you didn't want to drill holes on here you could easily super glue some like door handles or something onto the edge of this if you don't have like the tools or, or don't feel comfortable using a drill or anything like that just go to the craft store or hardware store and find a couple of drawer poles and just use some super glue on the sides would work easily as well but I just tie the rope in knots on either end there and then just pull it tight against the, as you saw I pulled it through to help that knot get really tight and then just cut off the excess and then I just repeat the same process on the other side. After I got my handles on and picked this tray up, I was instantly in love. I think this is going to be so fun to style. I love how this turns out. I think that it is such a solid piece, you guys. It's not flimsy at all. And I've seen these in different craft stores. I mean, look how cute it is standing up like this. Like, I just think it is so cute. Uh, but I've seen these in craft stores go for like lots more than it cost me to make this. And it was took a little bit of time, but it is a piece that is going to be a staple for me for years to come and I am so excited to get to style it in different ways and come up with different places to put it. I would love to know down in the comments what you guys think of this one and if this is something that you would attempt. For this project, I am using a couple of square dowels that you can get at Hobby Lobby. I'm showing you here some of these came from Home Depot, Lowe's, uh, anywhere you can get them. And I will put all of my measurements and what I cut them to down in my description box. Uh, and so just keep that in mind that I will show you there all the different pieces that I had, but I will list them all out for you in the description box so you'll know exactly how to cut them and how many you need to do. Every once in a while, as a crafter you make a project that you absolutely fall in love with and you're like this is my favorite project ever this one is right up there with all of my favorites i love how this turns out i'm making a cute little bench that i have seen kind of popping up in my instagram feed that people have used kind of as a different style of riser or tiered tray type thing and that's what i'm going to create so i am taking these two pieces here and i am taking these little shorter pieces it's really hard to kind of understand at this point right now what it what it's looking like or how it's working until I show you and then you'll go aha so I promise so I just kind of marked about an inch and a half up from the base of those two blocks to glue my little short pieces to right now I'm making like the support for the chair so you'll be able to tell in just a moment and then on the other end I'm just gluing those right up against the end so just 
take note of how I'm doing this. It's kind of hard to explain where you'll see exactly what I mean here. So this is where once these have dried a little bit with my wood glue, you can kind of see here when I put them there, it's starting to kind of look like the sides of a chair or a bench. Does that, hopefully that makes sense to you. And then I'm just going to glue these onto both sides. So it's going to look maybe like the number six or something like that here. <laughs> That's the best way that I can kind of explain it there or a B or something like that. And I just kind of use my clamps and until it gets kind of a good hold there and then I'm just gluing that other piece together um, and then here they kind of stand up so hopefully you can see now and you go oh okay I totally get it because this is where we are here so this is really um, I'm doing that little support beam between the two sides of our bench this is what is going to hold them together besides the slats that will sit as the backrest and the seat rest on there. And so I'm just kind of eyeballing that into the center. This is very farmhouse. It doesn't have to be super exact. So don't worry. You can kind of, if, I, if you look at my height, I did this 12 inches high. And if you're like, I don't want it that tall, you don't have to do it that tall. And these are just paint sticks, the five gallon paint sticks from Lowe's or Home Depot or wherever you get your paint sticks. And I taped them all together to cut them. And you can just cut them with a miter box saw that you have like a hand saw. You can have like the, I use my uh, power miter saw that I have and I'm cutting those down. I cut those down to 11 inches. Again, I will have all of my measurements listed down in the description box in case you wanna recreate this. But I don't use any nails or anything. I just use hot glue and wood glue and hot glue just kind of gives it that short term hold and that wood glue uh, dries for that long term hold. And guys, this is so, sturdy like it really is and you can see that I left just a little bit of space between the slats on the backrest and the seat rest there and then I am just taking some antiquing wax and I am going over this now at first I started doing this with a baby wipe but after I had turned my camera off because you didn't want to see like 20 minutes of me staining this I do end up getting a brush and I will brush it all on and then wipe it off with the baby wipe since there's so much surface area to cover and in between the little slats and everything that's what ended up working best for me and you can stain this in whatever color you wanted to I just use the antiquing wax from Waverly to brighten it up a bit I just dry brush a little bit and by little I mean just the littlest amount of white chalk paint all over it just to brighten it up I just think that when you go along the edges and everything it kind of gives a little bit of definition to it and I personally really like the way that looks so completely optional to what you like and I just go around all of the edges here Hopefully you can see by the pieces here that there's not a lot of base pieces from start to finish. This took me less than 40 minutes and that's with staining and everything and doing my wood cuts and everything. It was a very quick project. I love how it turns out and I am so excited in the final reveal to show you how I styled it. I just, I love this. I always try and pick up these little packs of coasters when I see them on sale. I don't ever pay full price. I wait for them to be on sale, but they make the perfect little risers for tiered trays or even just for like a candle for your countertop or something. So I have these from Hobby Lobby that were from Christmas time. I got them at the after Christmas sales that they had. And I'm just going over it to cover up the wording just with some white chalk paint. However, you can see that that wording, you can still see it there. So if that was to bother you, so what I decided to do here is I'm just using some spackling to go over that to make it all level. If you're going to put something on the top of this and you're never going to see that or it's going to be on a tiered tray, you could probably just leave it. But I'm just showing you a way to get rid of that so that way if you decide to do something like this or ever run across those problems, just always kind of think outside the box of ways to solve those different little uh, problems that you come across. After that spackling dries, I just go in with my file and I'm just gonna file it off so it's nice and smooth and gives it a good finish and flat finish so that way things won't tip over when they're sitting on it. And I just go in and I paint with that same color of chalk paint over the spackled area. Now just to show you really quickly, these are a couple of different coasters that I have used in the past to make tiered tray little risers and they're so cute and so fun and so many different options that you have. For the feet for this little riser, super simple. I'm just using some wooden beads. I just put them on a barbecue skewer and then I am going to tape in between them. That way I can paint the top, the bottom. I can flip that skewer different ways in different directions to get all of the angles and the beads won't run into each other making a big clumpy mess. 
since this is not going to get like heavy use or anything, since it is just probably going on a tiered tray or just holding something small on a counter, you can just use hot glue to put those beads on and super simple and you can see how good that looks right there. Even though this riser is small in size, I think it definitely adds a big impact. It really just gives you that fun little element with the little bead of detail on that and just so simple. And this is so easy and honestly something that anybody can do. I have this pack of wood slats from Dollar Tree. I think they come with six in a package, plus a couple of wooden boxes and then a couple of just wooden squares. So I'm just gonna make a pillar, I guess, or a column, plant stand, whatever you wanna call it. But I'm just gonna make a rectangular box out of these wooden flat slats. I'm not sure really what you would call them other than that, anyway. So you can just see I'm using a combination of wood glue to make it for a long-term hold and then some hot glue to give that short-term hold. And I am just taking a couple of dowels and I cut them into pieces to give a little bit more surface area for the glue to kind of adhere to. And that's just going to make it a little bit more sturdy and hold its shape a little bit more rather than just having the edge glued together. So I'm going to take the box here and I'm going to take the lid off and turn the lid upside down and I'm going to glue the edge of the box and turn it over. This is kind of give, going to give us a little bit of architectural element on the pillar. So you can see I'm just going to glue that down and I'm going to do the same thing on the other box and then once I get that done I'm going to take those flat square pieces and I'm going to glue the lid of the box to those. So you can just kind of watch closely what I'm doing here. So after I get those glued together and my rectangular box is pretty sturdy and dry, it takes about a half an hour to get it to a really sturdy point. Then I'm just going to glue each end of this to each little um, architectural end. I guess we'll call it, that I have made. And so you can kind of see it start to come together here. And I just kind of spin it because that glue does give you a little bit of working time to get it so it is um, straight and everything. And right now I'm not using any hot glue. I'm just using the wood glue because I'm going to set and leave this overnight just to get a really good hard cure to it. You do want to maybe have a wet cloth. I use some baby wipes around to kind of wipe that glue off because it does drip quite a bit. So after this dries, after a day, I go in with some paint. You can choose whatever paint color you want to paint yours. I wanted to go for a very rustic, um, kind of like, obviously farmhouse, but, <laughs> but kind of just uh, something that maybe you had found a piece of something from an old farmhouse or old barn or something that you had taken into your house to use as a plant stand. So I wanted to start with the white base and then go in and add distressing from there. So I give this two really good coats of my white chalk paint. Then I take my emery board and I'm just going around every single edge, every single corner and sanding it really good. I even take each of those corners and give it kind of a, a more of a round shape to it. Then I take some antiquing wax and I just do my dry brushing all over it. I get a little bit heavier the further that I go, just kind of depends on how you want it. After I let that dry completely, I do go back in with some more of the white and dry brush over the top of that so it's not so harsh and it kind of softens it. I did go in with a little bit of elephant chalk paint also to kind of give it another little dimension there, but you can see how it looks together here. I'm excited to put this with all of my plants and my little uh, trinkets, different things, you know, just kind of style it really good. But I'm really happy with how this turned out and for just a couple of bucks to get a really good looking, I didn't have to cut anything out of wood, I think it looks great. This is one of my most favorite risers ever. I found this wall hanging at Hobby Lobby and you can see here how it has the little detail to hang on a wall. It was $22, I got it at 50% off, so it was $11, but I, it's absolutely beautiful. And I have these little candle cups that I got at the little wood section there at Hobby Lobby as well, but I'll see if I can leave a link down in my description box to find these on Amazon. But I'm just going to turn this into a riser. I thought it would be so 
so beautiful. So I'm just taking my needle nose pliers there to put inside of my little candle cup. And I'm just going to paint these the same color or as close as I can get to the same color as my actual tray that I'm going to use. And then since the tray itself is distressed, I am going to distress the little feet here so that way it matches and gives it one nice look. I just want to point out that you should always just look for shapes that, of things that you like. And if you think that it'll, I mean, just try it. I mean, I had no idea how this would end up looking, but I love it so much. And I'm just taking some E6000 and some hot glue, and I'm just putting these feet evenly spaced around the base of this on the back side, so that way it will stand up off of the counter. And then as you can see here, I'm just making sure that all of my glue is cleaned up because you don't want to see any of that seeping out anywhere. I thought this piece was absolutely beautiful when I saw it. I just didn't have anywhere in particular in my home that I could think of to hang it. So this way I still get to use it in my home and enjoy its beauty. Here it is all decorated with some decor. Let me know what you guys think of this one. I think this is so high end and it is so simple. And it is so awesome to be able to take a piece that you love and be able to convert it into something that will work for your home. I wanted to make my own riser that was very farmhouse looking that kind of had like the wooden bead detail and had the iron and also the wood together. So to get that look, I'm just using this little hanging wire basket from Dollar Tree and they are in stock now. I did see them the other day. They have them every spring. And so I'm just using some wire cutters to cut off the round circle on the base. Invest in some good wire cutters would be my advice to you because it, it is pretty hard to cut through, but I mean, you can do it. I just had some like little teeny wire cutters you can see. And then I just used an embroidery hoop to get that wooden round edge on there. That was kind of just what came to me to think to do that. So if you had a different alternative, you definitely could do that. I just used some hot glue and held each of those little wires in place until it dried before moving on to the next. Now I'm just taking a wood round. This is one of the very thin wood rounds that come in like a pack of three or four. I'll try and put a link in my description box for these. But I just take some wooden beads and I kind of did a dry fit with them. And so that way I knew exactly how many it was going to take to go around and just hot glued each of those on. And then I'm just taking some antiquing wax and I am just covering all sides of the wood round that will go on the top and then the wood round that will be on the base to glue. Now I stained the inside of this, which technically you wouldn't need to do because it's going to be glued together. So you would never see that. <laughs> so just keep that in mind when you're doing it. But I do also do the little uh, embroidery hoop to match. I glue it or not glue it, but I stain it. Now I'm taking glue and I just go around this little circle. I'm gluing it just to this little square to have a better surface to glue onto my wood round if that makes sense. So I glue it on and put a lot more hot glue as you saw and I just let that dry completely before moving on to the next step with that. So as you can see, I just take some glue and go around the edge of this wood round here and then you just have to work quickly and then I just pick up the one with all the beads that are glued to it and sandwich that down on top. So you can see the inside of that. Nobody's ever going to see that. So I didn't necessarily need to stain that. Now I am just going to use a pencil and a ruler to measure out where this square is going to go. And then I just trace it because this is going to be the bottom. No one's going to see that pencil square. But it does give me a really good template on where I need to glue my piece there. So I just use my hot glue and then I am just going to turn that over and place it right inside of that square. And this is what it turns out looking like. I love this. I use this a lot in my staging that I do for my photos on other videos and I get a lot of compliments on this. And I absolutely love this piece. It feels sturdy and I just think it looks so farmhouse. This DIY turns out so cute. Dollar Tree has these little nesting boxes in their crafting corner and I'm using two of those. And then I'm just using a wooden dowel or you can pick up a plunger at Dollar Tree and just use the handle on the plunger. It's made out of wood. You can use that for your wooden dowels and it's sometimes a lot cheaper than getting them like at the craft store or hardware store. Now I have just cut my dowel down to the size that I want my little tiered tray to be. And which I think this is about seven inches that I did. And I'm just using some hot glue and wood glue. 
Now I wanted to glue my dowel more towards the back of the box because I want more items to be able to fit in the front when I decorate with it because this will be in a space where you won't really see the back of it. So keep in mind if you want to decorate it all the way around you might want to center your dowel a little bit more. Now just using some hot glue and wood glue I just do the same process to get that top nesting box glued on. Here's just a bonus little hack for you. If you ever find little napkin rings keep in mind of what you might be able to do with them. This particular napkin ring came from Hobby Lobby. The little pot came from Dollar Tree. I'm just using it to stuff in my little tiered tray. It looks almost like a little topiary there even if you see the hole in the middle but those little napkin rings if you ever find those at any stores that you're traveling to keep in mind of different things you can do with them on tiered trays because they're a lot of fun. Dollar Tree has recently had a lot of these wooden beads. You get them in a pack of 125 and it comes in all sorts of different sizes. So I'm just going to make a little beaded garland because I love hanging beaded garland from different things. It adds a lot of texture and I just think they're really cute. So I'm just doing a little pattern with a couple of small, then I do the next size up and then the biggest size. And I just repeat that pattern throughout the whole length of this beaded garland. If you're not lucky enough to find these beads at your Dollar Tree yet, keep watching for them, but I always have a link in my description box for ones that I like to buy on Amazon, so just keep that in mind if you can't find those. I am just using a galvanized tag that I also got at Dollar Tree, and I will just loop over my twine and feed that little beaded garland through there, so that way it can tie easily onto. You can kind of tie that on however you want. That's just how I chose to do it. And then all I'm going to do here is just take the end of my twine feed it up through a couple of the beads and cut it off so that way you don't have that little piece hanging out. You could always make a tassel for the other end of this or instead of the tag, I decided just to tie mine off at the other end because it will be resting inside of the tiered tray and you won't see it. So I just tie a knot with that and then I like to use a little bit of hot glue just to secure that knot. And I mean just ever such a small little daub of hot glue on there just to kind of make sure that knot is not going to come untied or anything in the future. Now I'm using some of these little rub-on transfers from Dollar Tree. These are some of their new farmhouse line that they have, which are super cute. I'm just taking the word well Welcome. and I just cut it down from that sheet because I can use all of those others and other projects that I have and I like to just use a little wooden craft stick. These uh, particular rub-on transfers go on very smooth and very easily. If you saw me use the foiled ones, they I have not had luck with those, uh, but these are very simple. You can see I just peel that back and it just comes right off and transfers that word welcome on there and it's just something really cute to place in your tiered tray. I love to collect different types of coasters to use for DIY projects. I found these darling little farmhouse coasters at Hobby Lobby. I'm just gluing a couple of the tumbling tower blocks onto the bottom and it makes a cute little stand for my tiered tray. This little welcome sign turns out super cute there and here is everything put together. I love how this turns out. It is so cute. It is very farmhouse and it is a perfect way to use those wooden beads and those little wooden nesting boxes from Dollar Tree. For this riser, I just took a little candlestick riser from Dollar Tree and spray painted it. And I had this little wood round that I went ahead and sanded down. And I am going to make what traditionally would be the bottom of it, the top. So I just go over with um, some antiquing wax and I really take my needle nose pliers and distress the heck out of this wood. I wanted it to look really aged and I wanted the base of this to look like jadeite. And so I painted it with some pistachio spray paint and I'll link down below the color that I use so that way you can see that. But again, this is just a riser from Dollar Tree and I'm just using some hot glue here and I just glue this right on like this. And again, I have it so the little beveled edge faces down and I love that. But I think this turns out so cute. It is so spring, it matches my jadeite and it is so simple and easy. What do you guys think of this? I love these cute little signs from Dollar Tree that say this is us and they are so darling the way they are but they are such a great shape to make some fun things out of. So I'm gonna make a little tiered table out of these. So I'm going to remove these little hangers from the back and then what I'm gonna do is take this dowel, it's not a dowel rod, it's poplar square is what it's called. I wanna call it a dowel, but it's not round. Anyway, I buy this at Home Depot, it was about $2 uh, and change and I measure one and a half inches for the bottom feet of my table. So I cut one using my little miter box saw here and then I use the rest of them, the little uh, one and a half inch legs that I do to measure the rest of them with, if that makes sense. So then you can see all four that I have there. And then I'm going to go ahead and use wood glue. And then where the wood glue has an open space where I didn't put it, I'm going to use some hot glue. This is giving it that temporary and long term hold. And so I'm going to show how I do this on all four of these legs. 
because the next legs that I do for the next level of my table, I do not have any footage for and I apologize for that. So watch close how I glue these in and I'm gonna do this exact same process just using a different measurement for the next set of legs for the table. So for the second level of this table, I'm going to measure up on my ruler how high I want it to be. And then I do take that poplar square down on my floor with my miter box and saw, and I just cut those down to size and I glue those in the same way I glued those bottom legs in. Then I'm taking some white chalk paint and I'm painting the whole exterior or frame of this table and completely covering it all in white. I am then taking these five gallon paint stir sticks that you can purchase at Lowe's or Home Depot. They come in a package of three for just a couple of dollars. And I'm going to measure where I want my table top to be. And I do take those to my miter box and saw and cut those down. Then I'm just using these craft sticks to go on the back to hold them together. And I am using the combination of wood and hot glue. I want this thing to be very sturdy. And trust me guys, it is very sturdy and you can see how that sits flush with the top. So those pieces on the top go horizontal and I wanted to change it up and on the bottom do vertical pieces of wood. So I'm taking the gallon paint stir sticks and I'm measuring where I need to cut all of those. And then I take those down onto the floor with my saw and miter box and I cut those down to size. And you can see how I have to cut a couple of pieces different lengths like really short pieces to go around the legs of my table so i'm showing you how the top fits in that bottom and how the bottom will fit in so i'm going to take this main piece of the bottom where all of those pieces can fit into one i don't have to fit these like puzzle pieces around the table at all if, if this at all makes sense just kind of watch what i'm doing here and i'm going to glue the craft stick onto these to hold them together that way they will fit inside of the legs of the bottom part of the table. Then I stain the top and the bottom layer of the table here, the tabletops with the antiquing wax. And I just go around making sure that I have each of the edges and everything because those edges are visible making sure that it is all completely covered. Okay, now we get to attach the tabletops to our little tiered table. And I just, again, I use a combination of the hot glue and the wood glue. And you guys, this thing is so sturdy. It is not going anywhere. So I do the same thing with the bottom layer here, just the wood glue and the hot glue for stability. And I lay that inner layer of that one down. And then you guys remember that game Tetris where you'd fit the little pieces in? That's totally what this reminded me of. But I fit these little pieces in around the legs and I get this last little piece glued on here. And then of course I do just let this dry a little bit. And then I'm gonna take my emery board and I go in and rough those edges up. It, it doesn't really rough them up, I guess. It gives them more of a dulled, not so harsh look on all of the corners. And then I do take my elephant chalk paint and I go in and give this a really good distressing, if you will. So I know if not everybody loves distressing, I do. I really feel like if you found this in a potting shed, it would be pretty roughed up. And so I really kind of wanted to mimic that rustic look. But guys, look at how cute this is. When I started styling this, I got giddy inside. I was so excited. 
I think this is going to be so fun to change up for the different seasons and just kind of a different take on a tiered tray. So it's not so such an obvious tiered tray, if that makes sense. But you would still just use those little miniatures on it to decorate. What do you think of this? Let me know down in the comments if you've seen anything like this or what you think of this. I have a couple of these round frames. They actually came from my grandma's house. And the gold, I know gold's coming back in, but it's just not my style. So I thought, hmm, I'm gonna make a little tray out of these. I'm trying to update my uh, vanity in my bathroom. And I thought, oh, I'm gonna make a cute little fun tray to be able to set maybe my perfumes and lotions on, things like that, face cream. I don't know, I just thought it would be kind of fun, give it a nice little summer update, make it seem really bright and airy. So I have some Christmas tree garland that I have these wooden beads from and I just cut some off and I'm going, I turn the frame upside down and I'm just going in and I'm gluing each bead on. Now you probably could do a whole ring, like a line of hot glue and then just kind of stick the beads on rather than gluing each individual one down like that. I was trying to minimize the look of hot glue in between the beads. So it helped a little bit, but not perfect, but that's okay because it, it doesn't bother me too much. I really wanted to use this oval piece from Dollar Tree. I tried so hard to see when I stacked it like that in between, when you looked at it from the side on, you could totally see the edge with the beads. I didn't love the way that it looked. So you can see my, my mind's kind of thinking. So ultimately I decided to go with the jumbo wooden popsicle sticks kind of give it more of like a shiplap look I guess so I go in and I just trace each of these to the open oval space and cut them and then I glue them down inside each one now you're never going to see the back of these popsicle sticks because it's going to be fully enclosed so I'm not really concerned about how the back of this looks right here because it's going to be the inside of this little tray but I'm going to go ahead and glue all the way around the edge here so I can go ahead and place it down on top of all of the wooden beads and I've gone ahead and glued the back of the wooden slats really well to make sure they're not going to come out or anything. So here we go. I'm moment of truth. I'm going to turn it over. And you have just a little bit of time to kind of get it all straightened out. Everything like that. And I decide I want it off the ground. So I'm going to add a couple beads for feet onto the bottom. So I just glue a couple of those. I kind of played around with where I wanted them positioned. And this was the spot that I felt worked the best with the look I wanted from the side, like the profile view, if that makes sense. So we're going to take this outside and I'm using my Rust-Oleum chalk paint. Uh, spray paint and I'm just going to give this um, I spray it twice is what I do and just making sure that you get the top really well on those jumbo popsicle sticks and then also in between each of the beads so it takes a little bit to get your coats on there as evenly as you need to but do it twice take your time and do a really good job and then of course you know me I distress everything so if you like it just plain or you want to add it as a different color you want it to maybe keep frames gold do it however you like to do it but I'm just going in and lightly uh antiquing this I at Hobby Lobby I've seen so many trays with the beads in between that do have that little bit of rustic look to in between them so that was kind of what I was going for I do go back over with a little bit of white to soften it just so it, to me, the antiquing wax gives it a little bit of definition. So I use a combination of the antiquing wax and elephant. This way it makes the beads kind of pop a little bit rather than just blending in as, as one piece. So I like the dimension that it gives it. I hope that makes sense to you. <laughs> I had an idea that I could take some scrapbook paper and cut it to size to put on the top. I thought this kind of made it look very summery, kind of very cheerful. You could change the paper out with the different seasons. I did not Mod Podge it down because I'm not 100% sure I'm going to leave it. You can see here what it looks like without the paper. It still looks really cute. So I thought that would be something kind of fun to be able to change up. You can see how I have it styled here with a couple of little plants. I think it's super fun. I'm excited to put it in my bathroom. I honestly think my grandma would be so happy that I was repurposing something of hers to use. So let me know down in the comments if you've seen these kind of trays and what you guys think of this one. 
This particular riser can be done with any piece of scrap wood that you may have. If you don't have any scrap wood, they do sell little cute pieces like this at Hobby Lobby. You can see the $3.99. And then I'm just using my heat tool just to kind of scrape that little price tag right off. This will be the bottom of this and it does have this cute little beveled edge on it, but it is a little bit rough. So I just kind of go over it because I don't want to get any slivers and I want my paint to go on fairly smooth over that. So I just smooth that and then wipe it down. Now I am going to be painting this all the same color. So I want to make sure that I have the feet on so when I paint it, I can paint it all together. And I'm just using some wooden beads on this. I'm just using a combination of the wood glue and the hot glue to get these beads on for the little feet on our riser tray. And I'm just going to, I left it sitting overnight. The hot glue just helps hold them in place and that wood glue is what it gives it the really strong hold there. And then I'm just using kind of a spring green color. Whatever is speaking to you the day that you make yours is what color you'll wanna do. I mean, there the possibilities are endless. I really wanna age this though. So once I get this completely covered with as many coats as I want, I'm taking just a chip brush with some antiquing wax and you can kind of watch how I distress this. Now I know this may not be to everyone's liking but some people do really like this. I just wanted this to look very aged and very weathered so I am just lightly going across with that antiquing wax because I wanted to look like maybe this green paint was just paint that was like chipping away and you could see the wood underneath or maybe it was just really grimy or something but I go around all of the edges and everything with this technique before I pass my brush through again though you do want to make sure that it's dry or it will kind of smear that wax if that makes sense so I'm very careful to kind of not go over the areas I have already done but I'll let you just go ahead and watch and see kind of how I finish distressing this around all of the edges and everything Here is this riser completely staged. What do you guys think of this? I know that that distressing is not everybody's taste, but I am very happy with how it came out. I love it, it's going to be perfect, and I think it looks so cute right here, and I am just loving that color of green. This is a super easy and quick little thrift flip. I found this little winter Christmas candle stand at my local thrift store for a dollar and I thought it would be perfect to kind of paint a basic color. I'm just gonna paint it white and make a cute little riser out of it. I love to use risers in my decor. I have a whole video that is dedicated to risers. I'll leave a link down below if you wanna watch that. But I take this little round from Dollar Tree and I am taking off this little word that says family here. It is a very thin, there's no way I could have saved it for another project. And then I took all of the paper off and then I sanded this round down and I sanded all of the edges to kind of soften them a little bit so it wasn't such like a harsh edge to it. And now I'm just taking some Mod Podge and putting this on the candle base there to help have the paint adhere to it. You could spray paint this, I was just out of spray paint so I just decided to use chalk paint and I just chalk painted them both in a basic white color here. So now I'm just going to use a combination of E6000 and hot glue to glue that round onto the base. I take my emery board and file the edges to give it a distressed look. I use a little mineral chalk paint and then I go over it with some white to kind of dull it down a little bit so it's not super harsh. I love the stability of this piece and I love that thick base with that uh, round top on it. I think it's so cute. This will definitely get lots of use out of it. I'm always looking for different ways to do risers to raise things up high if I need a different level or something and I think this will be perfect for that. This little riser ends up being so sweet and so cute in the end, and I use this all the time in my decorating. So I'm just taking one of these wood rounds. I bought this in a package of like four or five at the craft store, but I have seen these at Dollar Tree just on their own, and they also come in different shapes, like squares, hearts, ovals. So use whatever you can find or whatever is going to fit your needs. These always come with a little bit of rough edges, so I do sand them down and then wipe it down, but I do take some needle nose pliers and I like to make a very distressed looking piece of wood. So I just kind of go over all of the edges. You can see all of my little indentations that I have made there. And then I'll just take a baby wipe and some antiquing wax to stain this. However, you just wanna make sure that you can kind of see how all of those little divots are showing there, that you'll take some antiquing wax and saturate each of those little areas. You can either do that by like I'm showing here, pouring the antiquing wax right on, or if you saturate your baby wipe, you just kind of will press down and hold it for, you know, 10 seconds or so to make sure that all of that wax goes down into those little indentation marks because it just makes it look extremely aged like it's been around forever. 
I got this little candle holder at the craft store when it was 50% off, so it was like $2.50. You may already have something in your home that you can use. I just loved the little color and the aging marks of it. And to affix this on there, I can use some E6000, so you can use that for a permanent hold. I actually just did hot glue because I wasn't sure how long I was going to use this. Guys, I've had this for over a year and I use it all the time. It's up all the time diff through different seasons in decorating. That hot glue has held really well, but you definitely can use E6000 for a more permanent hold if you would like. I think this turns out so beautiful. I love it. It literally just puts your items on a pedestal. I think it is so cute. I've used it a lot in tiered tray decorating and in my china hutch. It is so versatile. Let me know what you think of this one down in the comments. Are you guys on Instagram? If you are, I would love if you would come and find me. I am Farm Charm Chic over there. I'll leave a link down in my description box so you can easily find me. But come and see what I'm working on. I post there quite a bit. I like to show you things that I'm working on or when I have videos ready. It's just another place to stay in touch. So if you do come find me, remember to send me a DM and say hi because I do love meeting new friends. I found this candle holder pedestal at the thrift store and I thought it would be a really, really good piece to have. So I kind of thought and thought about what I wanted to like, how I wanted to paint it or what finish I wanted to give it. So I ultimately decided to cover it in complete white chalk paint all over. So it takes about two or three coats to completely cover it. Now this is glass, it's not metal or anything. So it's not something that I'm going to like put outside or anything, but I wanted it to look kind of garden inspired. Like maybe it was like a piece of wrought iron that had been painted and then was like the wrought iron was starting to show through. So I'm just going in with like some elephant or some dark gray chalk paint to distress this. And it has a little bit of detail on the, um, the very top, like the lip around where the candle would sit that really picked up that detail really well. And then all of the little ridges that are on the base of the candle holder, um, it really picked up that distressing well. And so I just kind of went in, you can always add more, so go with a little bit and keep adding. And then you can also add some white paint back over the distressing if you feel like you've added too much to tone it down if you want to. I really wanted to make a moss ball to sit on top of this pedestal and in the floral accent section of my craft store I found this little like wicker ball almost and I bought this garland it was on sale for 50% off so it was $7.50. Um, if I tried to think of some different ways I could actually make this, like get a form for this moss ball. This was the best that I could come up with for the price. So if you had something on hand already or came up with something else to use as your base, that would work too. But what I'm doing is I just zip tie the end of this garland onto what is going to be the base of my moss ball. And then I wrap it all the way around one way, turn it around and wrap it all the way the other way. So that way it's wrapped around twice and it is like crisscrossing if that it all makes sense so it goes like north to south and east to west once i zip tie both ends down to where the base of my moss ball is i am just breaking apart all of these little teeny vines that are coming off and all these little stems and i am just tucking them into the grapevine on the or the wicker or the wire whatever it's several different uh elements that are there so i'm just tucking it in as i go around to make sure that this is completely covered now i just picked a uh, greenery like a garland that had a lot of little leaves like this that would easily tuck in so if you're going to recreate this you're just going to look for something that has a lot of long stems that you can stretch around so you can kind of see how that went all the way around there now I'm just taking some jute twine and I'm just going to tie it on the base there and then I'm going to wrap this around several different ways directions everything to hold that moss down and it also looks like this moss was you know that's what's holding it down onto the the ball and that was the look that I'm going for and I go around maybe like 15 times or more I mean it's quite a few times that I go around and if there's any pieces that are really sticking out that didn't get tucked in I make sure that the twine is tucking those in as well you can kind of see I'll go back over and make sure that that goes on those and once I get this as wrapped as many times as I want I'll just cut it off and I'll return back to that place I designated as the bottom of my moss ball and I will just tie it off in a knot there and then I go back through and if there's pieces 
pieces that need to be tucked in under the twine, I do that. Or if I want to pull them out, because I want it to kind of have like a fluffy feel, I guess would be the best way to describe it. So I go through and like I, you can kind of see me here, I'll pick some out. So that way the twine is a little bit buried inside of there, if that at all makes sense. This is the look once it's finished. I love how this turns out. I have seen these moss balls go for like way more than I paid. I absolutely love how this turns out and I feel like it has such a good spring and garden vibe. I would definitely love to hear your thoughts on this one down in the comments. I am loving cutting boards right now and they are all the rage and I found this darling little decorative cutting board at Hobby Lobby when it was 50% off so I paid $4 for it. I am not using this for food, it is strictly for decor, uh, decor purposes and I have these cute little finials that I got on Amazon and I will leave a link to those down in my description box but we're going to use these as the feet. So I am staining them with just some antiquing wax so that way they will match the cutting board and depending on what cutting board you pick up or you're trying this with you can paint your feet accordingly to kind of match or stain them both to kind of be the same. So I just took that little leather handle off. I decided that I didn't need that and I'll just use a combination of wood glue and hot glue and use my ruler and I'm just going to space out where I am putting these feet so I can get them kind of as symmetrical as, um, as I can. One of the most common questions I get is about my rulers that I use. Guys, I did pick these up about three or four years ago at TJ Maxx or Home Goods, and I have not seen them since. But if I ever find anything close to this, I will definitely let you guys know and leave a link to them. But I'm just using this to make sure that I get those feet pretty well, like on the same line, and that way um, that, that it's not gonna lean or anything when I place down this cutting board. But look at how absolutely darling this ends up looking with my little decor on here. This is so cute and I mean really it just adds so much of a good element to lift these items up off your original surface. What do you guys think of this one? I encourage you to take a look at your clearance section at your local home decor store or garage sales, yard sales, or even thrift stores at the section where they have their pictures because you'll find silly pictures that maybe you would never put in your home, but they have a great shape to them. And that's exactly what I'm using here. And I have these little candlesticks that I got at Hobby Lobby. If I have a link to them on Amazon, I'll put that down below, but that's going to be the feet here. So I completely intend on painting over that design. I don't really need a girl that's blowing bubble gum uh, picture, but you know, it works for the shape. And honestly, this particular riser is the one I think I use the most in my house. So I just give it a complete coat of white paint, even over the edges there you can see, and then I will paint the feet as well. Obviously, whatever color you're going to want to paint yours, you're going to choose that. I just thought that the neutral white would look really good. And like I say, this ended up being one that I use more often than any of the other risers. I've had this one the longest, but I love this one and I use it all the time. Just make sure when you're painting the feet on this or the legs, whatever you wanna call it, they're so tall I wanna call them legs, but just make sure you get every angle because when this is set up in your home, you will be able to see all sides of those feet. I just love how this one turns out. It went from a silly little picture to something that I use all the time in my home. So again, I just encourage you to think outside the box, look for a shape rather than what the picture is on the front or something like that. What do you guys think of this one? I love how this DIY turns out and I just want you to know that this 100% came from the brain of Jamie over at Simple Roots Simple Living and I will leave a link to the video where she made this and also her channel down there just so you can check her out if you want to because she is so talented but I loved this DIY and it was so simple and perfect for spring. So I'm just taking one of the candle holders from Dollar Tree and one of the wire baskets and I super glue them to one another. I did end up spray painting them black which I probably really didn't need to do. I kind of thought I would sand this more and the black would shine through so you can actually just go for it with with skipping that step that's why I didn't show me painting it all black but I'm just taking a makeup sponge with a clothespin and I am just dabbing some white chalk paint all over this I will end up covering the whole thing you could even just take this and just spray paint it completely white if you wanted to do that which you know here I go everything's totally white and I ended up not sanding it down but I make a rust color and I love this rust on here I think it looks so good I take um, a brown a maroon 
an orange and a yellow to make my rust and I'll kind of go over the spots of where I want that rust texture to be and then I'll even go in with just a teeny teeny bit of yellow over and dab it on because if you look at natural rust it really does kind of sometimes have that little yellow fleck and sometimes I mix a little baking soda in it to give it a good texture it just depends on the project that I'm working on. You can make this as rusty as you want or not at all if you want to skip that step. I just loved the fact that it looked like it had been sitting out like an egg basket sitting out on the farm for a long time. Now I do go down on that riser, that little candle holder, and I do add a little bit onto that so it looks like it was rusted and I use a brush to do it on there and I am just tapping to give it that texture and if you put baking soda in there this will give it that nice rusty texture how rust kind of bubbles and I just do that till your heart's content or till it looks good and then I just put a little Spanish moss and some eggs in it and look at how adorable this is. I love this. I use it all the time in my spring decor. Actually, I ended up leaving this out through most of the summer last year with just some regular uh, farm eggs in there and it was so cute. This is just a thrifted vase that I have and I also have this little treat lid that came from one of the plastic treat containers from Dollar Tree and I have various sizes of raised dot stickers that also came from Dollar Tree. To decide what size of dot I wanna use, I just place them on each of the little scallops of this little tray, that, well, it's going to be my tray, and I try and decide which size I like better. I ultimately decide to go with the smaller size. Once I put that on there, I can clearly see that that's the size that I want. So I just go through and place all of those on each of the little scallops. Now to get this little lid onto my vase here, I'm just using a combination of E6000 as well as hot glue. And then I will just do my best to find center of that lid and place it onto the base there. And then I will just kind of make sure that I have a really good strong bond there to let that uh, hot glue dry. And then I will just leave it to let that E6000 dry. Now I just spray this with a little bit of white spray paint. You can use whatever color you would like. I just make sure to get a really good coat all over it and those cute little raised dots I feel like look so cute uh, and so I'm going to do a little bit of distressing here and I am just using some elephant chalk paint you could do this in whatever color uh, you wanted to if you wanted to use like a stone color or something like that so it wasn't quite as um, definitive or dark I guess as the elephant chalk paint but I really loved how that looks on here so I just go through and make it look really weathered and really aged it makes makes those little dots pop. It makes all the little scallops have a little bit more detail. Again, this step is completely optional, but just to show you what it looks like, I even go through on the top here and give it a little bit of the distressing there as well. I think this little riser turns out so cute. I love to use this in my decorating. I love how those little dots ended up on there. It's just about using your creativity and looking for the shapes of pieces that you would think would make really good riser shapes and putting them together. It's so simple, anybody can do this. For this particular riser, I wanted to do a theme kind of like a cake stand. So that's kind of what I'm going for here. So I am just putting these little wooden half beads into a Ziploc bag with some antiquing wax. And I'm just going, going to kind of like mush them around, judge them around, get them all covered and everything. I do just wanna mention that I do use this in my kitchen a lot, but it is not food safe, so you just don't wanna put food directly on it. Just lay like a napkin down or some tissue paper down or something like that. Just make sure there's some type of barrier between your food and the cake stand itself. So after I dump these beads out, I just take a baby wipe and kind of wipe the top of them so that way they're not very goopy at all. And I just take this little wooden round that you can find like at Home Depot, Hobby Lobby, uh, somebody told me that Dollar Tree Plus, if you're lucky enough to have one of those, sells these. So just whatever size that you would like. And I'm just using the antiquing wax to go over with a baby wipe and stain this completely on all sides. For the base, I am just using a wooden candlestick and I'm doing a taller one because I did want this to be very high. And so you can get these at your local craft store, you can get them at home decorating stores, thrift stores, wherever, you might even have some just on hand. But I chose one that was a little bit higher because I wanted more of that traditional like cake stand height. So just a little bit higher one, I guess. Anyway, so I just stained this completely to match um, so the base and the top match. And then to put these beads on, I just use a combination of wood glue and hot hot glue and just work my way around the entire outside portion of this wood round. Thank you. 
After I get all those half beads glued on, I do go back over with a little bit of the antiquing wax and a brush just to kind of fill in any areas that it might have gotten rubbed off or didn't cover completely. And that way you don't see any of like the bare wood sticking through. That's up to you if you want to do that or not. I did kind of like the way that it, it worked. I do end up distressing this with some white paint, so I guess it wouldn't entirely matter, but it is just, I'm just pointing out that I did that step. So now I just use wood glue and hot glue to glue that base onto my cake stand there. And then I got, uh, you can see here, I'm going to take my white paint on a brush and I go around all of those little half beads there and then across the top to give this a very rustic look. I love how this looks. I use this all the time in my kitchen. It permanently has a home in my china hutch with various things on it. I don't always use it for food, but it is kind of fun to pull out when we're having get togethers or something to use just kind of to have a different level on our table that I'm serving from. Again, just have a barrier between the wood and your food itself. But definitely let me know what you think of this one. I love the height of this one. It definitely makes this piece and I absolutely love it. I'm taking these two little signs that I got in the crafter square at Dollar Tree and I'm just removing the twine from each of them and then on one of them I just want to cover the holes so I'm trying this little method of using some hot glue in there and just kind of scraping that up. You can use spackling whatever you would like to do to cover in those holes in fact if you decided you didn't want to that's up to you and then I just have this beaded garland that I also got at Dollar Tree and I am just running a bead of hot glue around the edge here you can see and then I'm just going to lay these beads one by one all the way around the perimeter of this oval. Now I was one bead short from having this completely come together. So you could space this accordingly or just kind of measure it out in the beginning. I did have some extra beads. So you may need two strands to do this if you really want to be exact with it. And you can just kind of see that bead fit perfectly in there. And then I just go around the inside of it with some hot glue to help make sure these are all adhered really well. On the top layer, I'm just putting some glue around the whole perimeter here, and then I'm just going to turn this over and set it on top of all of those beads there, and then the beads are sandwiched between these two little oval signs. Now, yeah, I can use these little same beads from Dollar Tree, but I had some bigger ones that I wanted to use, a little bit chunkier beads, so it's up to you what size of beads or how you want to do your feet on here, but you want something to kind of rise this up off your surface, so I'm just using some hot glue to glue these in. I just kind of space them accordingly. Now I just paint mine a white color. You can stain it, whatever you want to do. And I am just taking my emery board and roughing up the front part of all those beads that are exposed there. And then I'm just going to dry brush some mineral chalk paint on there. And I also go over with some white to kind of give it a little whitewash look over that distressing. I love how the texture and the detail came out in this one. This just screams farmhouse to me. I think it is so cute and it's perfect. It's like a staple piece that you'll use all year long in a lot of different decorating and it's just a cute way to kind of display a little vignette. For this DIY, I'm going to use a terracotta pot and then a lid off of one of the food saver containers from Dollar Tree. I am going to make a watermelon tray. Now, when I think of backyard barbecue, I love watermelon. And to me, no backyard barbecue is complete without watermelon. So all of my DIYs today are watermelon themed in the inspiration from a backyard barbecue. So some of these you could use as a centerpiece and a table at a backyard barbecue, or you could just have them in your home to bring that summertime feel in there. So after I get these glued together with some E6000 and some hot glue, I take them outside and just give them a really good coat of a green colored spray paint. This is just giving the base color and then I'm gonna paint a watermelon design on the top. So I just found anything I could. It happened to be this little glass tray from Dollar Tree to get a, a good shape of a circle on. And I do go around and I'm making like the watermelon rind here. So I leave the darker green on the outside and do a little bit of lighter green on the inside. Had I thought about this, I probably would have done this particular green line a little bit thinner but it still looks good you'll have to let me know what you think so I just fill in the middle with some of the pink paint and I'm just using acrylic paint for these and I give that a really good coat for the center of my watermelon and then after that I'm going to go in and I'm going to create some little seeds on this I think this would be perfect to set salt and pepper shaker on a little floral display something super cute I don't believe this would be considered food safe so I wouldn't put any food on it unless you put like a napkin or some tissue paper down on it but I really think that this turned out so cute
To protect the paint job that I did, I am gonna put a really good coat of Mod Podge all over, and so I do just lay some of that down, and I go over all of the top of this, and then I even do the side edges of that scalloped edge on this lid to make sure that that paint is going to be absolutely protected from anything and it's not going to chip. Here's what it looks like after the Mod Pod dries. I think this just turned out so cute and absolutely darling. I think it is the perfect piece to bring that watermelon feel to your backyard barbecue. Let me know what you think of this piece down in the comments below. I thought it was super easy and super fun. I would like to thank you so much for taking time to watch this compilation make a video. It really means a lot to me. Did your favorite make the list? Did you see something new that you enjoyed? I would love to know down in the comments, either one of those. I always love reading what you guys enjoy seeing. I hope that you have such an amazing day and I'll see you next time. Happy crafting. If you like the video that you just saw and you want to keep crafting together, here's another video that you might enjoy. And as always, remember to like and subscribe. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.